Okay, let's keep building on our thermal simulation workflow. We've been working with this simple single zone model, like a little hut basically. The idea is that it's a single module and we can add to it and build a, lar a larger project. So let's just let's start on that process. I'm going to let, let's first uh, create a little house from this zone. So um, we can add we can make this the living room and add a kitchen a bedroom, uh, a bath and storage, and then a foyer, entry foyer. This could be a little, a little balcony or outdoor porch. Um, and let's add some windows. Okay, so we have a small house now, but the idea is that then the principles we use for our, our single zone, we can apply equal... Uh, Similarly, similarly to these other zones, and it's uh, additive. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but um, the the back end of this workflow in Climate Studio is Energy Plus, which is a, a U.S. government energy modeling program that that, as far as my experience, uh, most of these energy modeling programs use. So. Um, so they, they use the protocols for that and, and the, the, the modeling engine and then create these graphic interfaces for us to architects um, so we have access to this really powerful information. Um, so the reason I'm bringing that up is, is to make the point that so the this line, this uh, zone, or I'm sorry, this uh, interface between uh, the, you know, the, the living room and the kitchen Energy Plus automatically knows that that's an interior space uh, because of the way we're de defining these zones just by... Uh, so, um, no heat we lost through those zones. Uh, it's it's uh, called adiabatic. Um, and um, so, the, uh, we don't need to worry about... A lot of these things are built into to the model. And um, if you have any questions about what is or isn't, we can talk about it in class. Um, so let's now um, set up our house, finish setting up our house. We need to add a, so we're going to say that we're sitting on the ground like we were in, in, with the first, uh, the single zone. So uh, let's see, where's my, my ground is here. I'm going to turn it on so we can see it and select it and we'll add it. So now we have, um, I've already add, actually added these four zones. So we have um, the living, kitchen, uh, bath storage, bedroom, and then, of course, the, uh, the ground plane. Another thing to say is that um, inter, uh, Climate Studio is not set up out of the box to do small buildings like single family homes. Um, Single-family homes are not the big problem we've got right now in the world, or that what most of us are going to, are going to be designing in our careers. Um, so that's not going to be the focus in architecture school either. All I'm saying is that I'm not worried right now about this being accurate, and so we're going to use templates that are not uh, single-family home right now, um, but we'll carry through with the same templates to um, as we build this into a, a larger project. Um, or the same type of templates. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select all of my, um, my zones by just holding shift. And if I hit edit, then I can um, edit them all at once. I'm going to select a template, this little, I think I've done this before, but if not, this is a really powerful uh, part of the workflow. Watch this. I, I'm hitting the setting, settings button up here in the upper right-hand corner, applying a template. I'm going to go find... Um, the 90.1 uh, standard uh, templates, and then I'll tell you why here in a second. I'm going to uh, call my or organize my um, library so that I'm just searching for um, multifamily housing. I see now I've got 90.1 2019 mid rise apartment. Uh, CZ4 means climate zone 4. I'm going to select that, say OK. Um, and then I'm going to select all my windows, which I think I've already got. Yes, I've already got them in here. We know how to add those, so I don't need to add them again. Um, and I'm going to um, 
edit all those at the same time and search for some 90.1 standard glazing. Uh, this is residential, so I'm going to go scroll down to the residential zone or, or area here. Um, CZ4, where climate zone 4 is our um, where we are in New York City. I guess I will choose operable glazing. Um, and we, we can talk about that later. doesn't really matter at this point, so I'm going to say OK to that. And now we're ready to run our uh, basic model. Why did I pick 90.1? So um, 90.1 is an ANSI ASHRAE standard. ANSI is the American uh, National Standards Institute, and ASHRAE is the American Society of Heating, uh, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, I think, and that's actually, I believe, has changed. Uh, these are organizations that create a variety of standards, and this particular one is very important to us in architecture. Um, it's it's sort of the the baseline beginning point for energy efficient buildings. Um, we're going to need to go further than this in this class to meet the local uh, law 97 standard for New York City. But we'll, it's a good place to start. It's um, uh, fairly co fairly coherent um, templates are created that we can just um, choose and not really worry about the, the presets right now. Um, so that's what I chose. I'm going to run this uh, simulation with the glass also from that same standard. And let's see what we get. OK, this I'm going to just name this briefly so we can know what we're talking about. I'm going to say 90.1 envelope glazing. OK, so um, we don't really know what to think about this. We're, though I will say, so this baseline here, um, this is from that standard. Um, or um, it might be, I don't know, in Climate Studio, it might be, it's, it's basically saying that there's a, um, a, a survey of buildings done in the United States. Um, this is comparing apples to apples and saying uh, the sort of average baseline for this type of building would have this energy usage. We're well above it. Um, and I'm going to explain why it's really, uh, it'll be obvious here in a minute. Um, the reason is um, that this is not a single family home uh, um, template that we chose. We chose, let's go back to it and look at, um, we chose this 90.1 uh, residential, but residential means uh, for a, an apartment building. And so what, what's the difference? Why would that uh, um, be a different in terms of a, of a, a thermal simulation than a single uh, family home? Well, let's, let's imagine, let's say that this is an apartment in a, a larger apartment building. So um, let's say I have, um, so I have uh, some stairs, an elevator um, set up and uh, you know corridor so so essentially we have a core here and then i build apartments uh, around our apartment uh, of course it could be much taller what has changed now well think look at how little of the building is actually exposed to the outside look how little of the building is um, exposed to the changing outdoor climate uh, and which is going to be the, the thing that causes the temperature to go up, up and down or, or there to be a, um, a, a temperature gradient um, pushing and pulling on our building. Uh, so we can, what do we have to do then differently in our, in our simulation to simulate this? Well, um, we're going to identify all of these surfaces, and I've already done this. Um, turn this off. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to turn off my zones and fenestration. So all so all of these surfaces are what are um, coplanar with other parts of the building. Um, these are in the parlance of energy modeling called adiabatic surfaces and it simply means that we're telling the model that there's going to be no heat transfer between uh, a zone on this side and and the one uh, on the other side of this uh, surface. So that means that we have, well, just it's going to be very different. Um, but we need to add it. So I'm going to go, um, 
I'm going to select this layer that I have these on, my adiabatic layer, and uh, come to this tab, which is my adiabatic boundary, and add them. this down oh yeah I did so these are this is our um, our adiabatic surfaces that are boundaries that are um, separating us from uh, other or essentially connecting us to other zones and we're not losing heat um, let me I don't need this ground boundary anymore because I don't have a ground I now have an apartment below me uh, so let's go make sure that we've got all of our yes so that one showed up there all right now if we bring our apartment back into this mix um, now we can run the simulation again, no changes required, um, and see what happens. So we see, let me, let me quickly name this. I'm just going to say adiabatic, and, and a lot of times when I'm quickly naming runs, I'll just, whatever I change, I will name, and then I'll assume that everything else has stayed the same. And what's what's our result change? Well, it's a huge difference. 78 uh, kilobtus per square foot um, for the house and only 31 for the apartment with no change other than uh, realizing that we don't have a lot of exterior surface area. Um, And you'll see that uh, one of the, the, the big changes, if I go back to the to the, the first of the house, and by the way, remember that these the range changes, so it, you need to really uh, look closely at the, the results uh, and not uh, not to be confused. We have why, why is this so? Uh, um, our results on the the uh, gains so crammed down against uh, this this part of the graph. It's because our I don't know if if, if this has been made clear yet. These uh, the white areas are um, that part of the load that's being having to be replaced by heating or cooling because this is a balance chart we're having we have to have the same heating and cooling um, heating gains as we have losses therefore keeping uh, the interior climate the way that we've set it uh, okay so um, what I notice here then is that a big part of this change is infiltration and that makes sense because now we have so little um, surface area exposed to the outside to um, leak air essentially that just by um, connecting to the rest of the building we've saved a huge amount of energy um, and uh, okay so let's keep going uh, I'm gonna just turn it over. this adiabatic surface is still gonna be here I'm just gonna turn it off so that I have access to clicking on my zones remember it's still in the model it's just not in the graphic window um, what if we, uh, again, playing around, this is not really set up for this right now, and I'm not trying to be accurate. What if I say, well, you know, this kitchen here, I think it's going to have a different mechanical system and uh, approach to heating and cooling more. It's going to have more ventilation and, you know, it's going to be producing heat with stoves and things. Um, I'm going to change its uh, settings compared to the rest of the building. So if I want to do that, um, and again, to do this accurately, I would have to, you know, be working with an engineer or just have done it a lot myself um, or you yourselves uh, but I'm just trying to make a point here so if I um, come to my kitchen and edit it I'm going to go to my templates again and I'm just going to pick this is really lame because I think this kitchen here is more I, I might be a commercial kitchen it's part of a multi-family housing template series um, it's going to have other different settings because it's not a 90.1 standard i'm just trying to make a point here i'm going to select kitchen um, to make that change say okay everything else is going to remain the same and run the simulation and let's see what our results are um, we see that we have a huge increase in our site EUI um, so the amount of energy we're using I'm going to put in kitchen here so we know what we're talking about uh, all right I, I did these already and so let me just find a slightly different name um, 
I'll just call it kitsch. <laughs> okay, um, so let's try to analyze this a little bit. What's happened between adiabatic and kitchen? Um, let's see. Yeah, basically, so the equipment uh, is one thing that's going up. This is we're, we're basically at 1,500 um, uh, kilobtus per square foot or kilobit. The we're in this is abs. This is total. No, it isn't. Um, per month uh, in when we have when we have our kitchen zone and um, down to 1200 so you know the third less um, when we just had it set to the apartment so that's one thing that happened is we just had uh, equipment like we sort of assumed that was going to be uh, running more uh, let's see if we have I bet we have more fan energy um, right so here here's we have no fan energy shown in our apartment uh, run but when I switched it to um, kitchen um, this darker blue is mechanical ventilation which makes sense we're going to, have to ventilate more in a kitchen so these are just all presets um, for whatever kitchen um, that template was designed for um, making the point that we we sort of surmise that would happen and, and what we thought happened did um, what else can we do well let's say we um, but before I forget I'm gonna go change that kitchen back um, to the other template and that was uh, I'm searching here so that's what you're, this is a huge list of templates so you want to use these uh, uh, these drop downs to your advantage um, multifamily housing I'm in climate zone 4 this this is, this is what we chose before uh, and uh, say okay so now we're back to where we were um, okay so now let's say we're um, designing and we want to add a balcony um, so if I add a balcony over my zone now you know I'd have one down here too probably and but we're just working on this you know we're, we're and this is this is a typical thing to do we're we're modeling a single apartment is a very useful um, we're, you know, if we had a 600 unit building um, it would be much more efficient to work on a single apartment uh, to, to troubleshoot certain aspects. Okay, so now we have, let's see what would happen if we add a balcony above um, our unit. So we have to now then add that sh to our shade. Um, so I'll just select these two and add them as shade and run. Let's see what happens. So the only thing we've done is we've added uh, we switched the kitchen back so that it's uh, the same, it's the 90.1 standard for climate zone four for a, an apartment building of this size, and um, so now we have um, a, you know a gain over the um, our 90.1. Let's see, let, let, let's just be disciplined here and put in balcony somewhere. Um, I'm calling it balcony because I have another one below this name balcony. Um, so what happened uh, between these two? Yeah, we have a lot more gains from the windows. The windows are the orange. Um, you remember that above the zero is the gains per month. Below is the losses. And in the adiabatics, um, the other, uh, the non-balcony version of this, uh, we have uh, more more gains both in the summer. And, or the, the cooling season and the heating season and we experienced this before that sometimes that balance uh, will we can reduce our cooling load but then we increase our heating load let's see if that's what we actually did so with the balcony without it right so we're actually with the balcony we're going to reduce this cooling load here for during the um, the summer but we're going to um, increase our heating load because we're blocking some sun when we were um, when we were using it to our advantage before so See this goes up over here, and this goes down. We go back and forth a couple times, and you see that dynamic. Um, okay, so you know, not too bad. Uh, if we want a balcony, definitely that we, we would live with that. But we could also try to uh, improve this situation. One way I'll, do, uh, I think what I'll try is just to um, use some really uh, more high performance glass like we actually used in the last um, iteration 
um, when we're doing the single zones. I'm going to select all my windows and edit them. And I'm going to go, again, I'm going to search for U value, find the, that uh, sample had the very low U, U value and very uh, small solar heat gain coefficient. So we're not going to be, we're really reducing all around our gains. Um, and we have a, a really good, uh, that we've actually improved the, um, the R value, um, or the, the R value is the reciprocal of the U value. So we've improved the resistance to heat flow of these windows. Um, and let's run it and see what that does. Remember, this is running over here on my other screen. You should always see this DOS window when you're uh, running a simulation. Um, okay, so that was a pretty dramatic uh, reduction in our um, EUI, our, our um, annual energy use, uh, um, energy utilization index. Um, so what did we do? How did, what, what, what um, looks like, yeah, we lowered our heating load and our cooling load. So let's go look at our energy flows again. Um, right, you can see that, so in the winter, I, I noticed that we're actually, we want to get rid of these, these losses and see if we can get some more gains here. Um, and then we would like to get rid of these or, or lower these uh, gains in the summer. And it looks like, yeah, these went way down, so um, that's because of that increased insulation value in, in the glass. And I think that we, yeah, we I think slightly increased, uh, improved um, in the, the solar gain in the, in the uh, summer also. And the the collective effect was a big um, reduction in our EUI for the year. Um, let's see, this was uh, low SHGC. Oh yeah, I already named it that. Um, about um, just for fun, let's see if we can keep going. Um, I notice here that uh, you know, and by the way, so now I'm I'm at uh, a fifty one percent savings. Um, over my baseline. By the way, I'll just mention this right now. We'll talk about it later. But if anybody's ever trying to figure out what this operational carbon is, this is really important for local law 97. This value in Climate Studio is wrong. It's not they. I don't know what they did. The conversion's way off. Uh, it's right in the SI version. Um, so uh, anyway, just if, that, if that's confusing you because you're um, you know really paying attention here, just realize we'll talk about that later. Uh, okay, so what, one thing I notice here, you know, we've got we could maybe um, try this. This is equipment. We could improve our, our equipment power density. I think the windows are pretty good, um, but I am seeing, and the in the envelopes pretty good. So we're we're really doing pretty well here, um, but we still have a lot of infiltration. So if we were building this as a new building, we could um, up that uh, our our approach to the construction to um, have. Oops, better, um, or lower infiltration rates. So if we come back to, I screwed this up or had to move it. Um, okay, um, if we come back and I'm gonna close these down and select all of our zones, edit them and come to our envelope um, section and I'm going to reduce this air, these air changes from point one. Point one's already very low, but I'm going to go to point two ACH. We're going to talk about. I've already gone over these inputs just to introduce them. We're going to talk about these in much more detail when we get to the larger a larger model. Um, so just you know, let's take some baby steps here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make that change. So basically, all we're saying is that we um, are uh, we're, we're assembling the building in a way that less air can move through the envelope um, which is always a smart thing to do or well that's a whole other dis discussion um, let's see what the effect that had and it, it did what um, I was thinking it would do based on looking at the the outputs that were provided here and yes so we went um, let me just Uh, 
um, we went from 24 to 18 uh, kilo BTUs per square foot per year and you can see that um, essentially the main thing that happened is that our this blue which is the infiltration uh, went down so uh, it's just that's something just to um, it's a pretty simple thing to do if, if we're uh, planning in for a new construction but if you don't plan ahead and don't have the right people working on it you'll never get there um, so uh, you know, be careful what buttons you push. Make sure that you follow through when you're um, actually getting the, your project built when you're at that stage in your careers. Um, all right. Maybe the last thing we should check is our comfort. Um, we're dealing with pretty high um, performance already. We started with 90.1, standard 90.1. Um, so I think we'll be fine, but let's just check it and see. So I'm going back to my initial, the standalone house. Um, let's look at our, yeah, so we're, uh, so all these individual lines are the zones, uh, individual zones, and we're uh, all within, nicely within the, the, the comfort zone here. Um, maybe when we have the kitchen, we might get a little bit more erratic. Yeah, a little bit going out, but uh, still, um, we're, you know, this is still within the 90.1 standard, so this is well thought through. Balcony shouldn't really have any effect on this, um, except to take us back to, uh, this is starting to. Um, by the way, if this starts happening to you when you're running uh, simulations, it, what's happening is I'm, as I'm clicking through my simulations, it's going really slowly. I found if I just close out and open up again, it sort of resets. I don't know what's going on there, but it's uh, worked a bunch of times for me. Um, but definitely if we get to, um, I'm just going to go straight to infiltration exam. Uh, we can see that, yeah, we're real, the, this, this final really low um, site EUI version that's got a, a um, we're really saving a lot of energy is also very comfortable it's very tightly within the, the comfort zone um, so there's a lot of moving parts to this but it's also um, there's a lot of benefits that if, if we focus on these these variables uh, all right so this is um, our simple little uh, single apartment in a small apartment building uh, next we'll do a little bit on daylighting and then move up to a larger building